Hello there, I'm Mira, and I know you're here to talk about some math and biology. Today, we'll be talking about effective population size. Effective population size, denoted by NE, is a way in which we can quantify the effects of genetic drift and inbreeding in a population. Specifically, the effective population size is an ideal population that experiences the same amount of these genetic effects as the actual population we're looking at. This is rather abstract, but in a bit we'll see how it has some really, very real applications. Hi, I'm Chelsea, and before we get too far into this, I want to make one thing clear. There is no the effective population size for an actual system in nature. Rather, it's a tool that helps us quantify the, genetic for the impact of a genetic force in a natural population. It's a theoretical number, but it'll help us understand the effects of inbreeding and genetic drift. Before we launch into our discussion on effective population size, let's head to the lab and see how genetic drift and inbreeding impact a local species. Alright, so let's take a look at genetic drift using the classical marbles in a jar model, but instead we'll be using a native Californian species, the jelly belly. Here we have the founder population of jelly bellies, where color represents different allele types. The idea of genetic drift is that due to random mating, or random sampling of alleles essentially, alleles will vary in frequency from one generation to the next. This impacts a population because alleles can be lost through drift or become fixed in the population, which means that all individuals in the population will have that allele. So, we're going to take this founder population and we're going to put it through a round of random allele sampling, or random mating of jelly bellies. Real proportions will look like now. All right, so it looks like we have a lot more of green expressed in the population. Still some reds present. We've lost a blue, but it's persisting. Uh, and so here are our new proportions of alleles. Let's put this through one more round of random mating and random allele sampling. Let's take a look at our new F2s. Awesome. So now we see that we have a lot more green. Blue has completely disappeared. And while red continues to persist, it does so in lower proportions. So let's look at our results overall over the three rounds of random sampling. As you can see, what we've shown is that alleles that start out with a high frequency generally persist or fix while low frequency alleles disappear. What this shows is that the effect of genetic drift is most prevalent in smaller population sizes as these proportions change very quickly. Here we've changed the proportions of these alleles over three generations where one has disappeared and one has gone to fixation. Let's take a look at how inbreed depression works. In a small population with reduced mating opportunities, there is a higher chance that relatives will mate and produce offspring. This can cause real problems regarding the spread and expression of harmful deleterious mutations. In our model, lowercase a represents a new recessive deleterious allele. While this mutation does not affect the fitness of the parent, represented by this little green jelly bean, it may be passed to its offspring. In a system without breeding, the deleterious mutation will remain unexpressed and perhaps die out in the population over time. However, in small populations without access to healthy and related mates, inbreeding may lead to the production of homozygous recessive offspring who suffer the whole effects of the harmful allele. Now that we've explained the wonders of genetic drift and inbreeding depression, we're ready to dive into effective population size. Genetic drift and inbreeding depression are fairly easy to observe in small natural populations or under our lab conditions. However, many natural populations aren't as simple as the jelly belly. In large populations, there are several factors that can point to having a lower effective population size. These are the number of breeding individuals may change between generations, the fitness and fecundity of individuals may vary, non-random non mating may take place, or perhaps most easily observed, you have different numbers of males and females, or uneven mating between the sexes, such as when one male will mate with several females. All of these factors can point to lower effective population size in large natural populations. Alright, so now we're going to calculate the effective population size. 
Now this is actually done in different ways depending on what genetic force you're looking at. First we're going to go through how to calculate genetic drift. Now drift is related to the allelic variation in a population. And to calculate this for our actual population first, we take the proportion of the two alleles divided by 2n. And using 2n, because in this case it's a four diploid organism. Now since the variation in the actual population will be the same as that in our affected population, we can just substitute n for an e, our affected population, and then rearrange this algebraically. We're going to take our variance, move it down here. population size related to drift is equal to the proportion of our two alleles divided by two times the variance of the alleles in our population. Now we're going to calculate effective population size based on inbreeding depression. First of all, f of t over here stands for the inbreeding coefficient. We're not going to go into how to calculate the inbreeding coefficient because that is outside the scope of this video. But for now, just believe me, that's the inbreeding coefficient. Now, to calculate the inbreeding in the next generation, we take 1 over 2n plus 1 minus 1 over 2n times the inbreeding coefficient of this generation. Now, in the same way that we calculated the genetic drift, we're going to substitute in for our for Ne for our effective population size. And then with the magic of algebra, we're going to rearrange that to n n sorry, n of e due to inbreeding is equal to we have 1 minus f of t divided by 2 times f of t plus 1 minus are f of t. Now, the really nifty thing is that we can assume that f of t of our initial population is zero. So that the so the inbreeding in our founder population is zero. And because of that, we can get rid of these f of t's and we are left with the effect of population size due to inbreeding is equal to one over two times f of t plus one. So, we learned a lot today. We looked at inbreeding and genetic drift in a population, and we applied these concepts to the mathematical concept of effective population size, where we actually managed to see how this could help us understand inbreeding and genetic drift in real populations in nature. We hope you learned a lot today with us, and thanks for stopping by. Happy exploring! The inbreeding coefficient. Oh, duh, take a look at the teeth on this bugger.